Hello and welcome to episode 73 of the Rollo and Slappy Show. Today is January 8th, 2018. I am Rollo McFlugel and with me is Slappy Jones 2. And we are both of McFlugel.com. The show notes page for this episode is McFlugel.com slash 73. And you can find this episode and all of our podcast episodes on iTunes and Stitcher and YouTube. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Slappy, and he's going to introduce our episode topic. Hey, Rallo. Thank you, everyone, for listening up to us today, tonight. Um, today's topic, we're going to talk about health insurance. Insurance, one of my favorites, one of Rallo's favorites. Um, we think insurance could go a long way in a free market, in a, in a free society, in regulating and helping promote good behavior among people. Um, and, you know, it's always a big topic in the news, always, over the last several years, is health insurance. And uh, Raul and I would argue that health insurance isn't insurance at all. Maybe it has little components of insurance, but it, it's not insurance. They're, they're covering things that don't have insurable risk. And, and uh, Raul has a, a story from eh, earlier this week or, or last week that he wanted to share with you, and that will be the basis of our discussion. So, Rallo, let's hear how your uh, trip to the pharmacy was. Sure. So I was getting a prescription refilled. I get some migraines every once in a while, so I have finally went to a, the doctor, and, and I got a prescription for it. So uh, I needed to get a refill. And so I go to the pharmacy, and when they try to fill it, they say, oh, you're uh, – so this supply of nine pills that they give, that we give you, the insurance treats that as a 20-day supply, and it's not been 20 days yet. It's been 15 or 16 days. I forget. And so they said, uh, you know, your insurance isn't going to cover it. And being that it's medication for migraines, the pharmacist said, okay, um, what we can do is we can sell you two pills outside of insurance. And you'll just have to pay full price. And I said, okay, how much does that cost? And she said, it's about $41 for two pills. Uh, you know, normally I'm used to paying a, a $10 copay. So hearing four times that amount for only two pills, it kind of knocks you back a little bit. But I thought about it and I said, you know what? I feel okay right now, but I don't know how I'm going to feel tomorrow or the next day or in the time between filling the prescriptions. So I said, yeah. Ring me up, please. I'll buy them. So it was just nice to nice to have that option, uh, but also got me thinking about some other things about, you know, why why would prescription medicine like that be a something that would be insured? But before we get into that, I thought we'd talk a little bit about the little microeconomic problem that happened in my head that I had to deal with right there. So it's a very simple uh, exchange right there. There's two pills, and I have $41. Why would that uh, exchange happen? Why would I trade my $41, which is a lot of money for two little tiny pills, for those pills? Because you're a libertarian, so you're very wealthy. Oh, obviously. You know, to put that in perspective... There's not, I wouldn't have to take that many pills uh, to what would have uh, been the equivalent cost of my tractor if I paid for them outright. Ooh, slipped it in early. I did. Good, good work. I wasn't, I actually forgot about it. So had you forgotten, it would have gone. Well, it's the only note I wrote for this episode again, so. Good. So this will be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> well prepared. No. <laughs> yeah, no, the obvious answer is you know, people act. You thought that was in your best interest. You wanted the pills more than you wanted the forty dollars, right? Or forty-one dollars, or whatever you said it was. Mm -hmm. And what adds a little wrinkle to this is that it wasn't necessarily what my preferences were at the moment. It was okay. What would I be willing to spend if I had a migraine? It'd be a lot more than twenty bucks a pill. At that moment, so I had to I had to forecast a little bit and take that into consideration as to whether I wanted to, um, you know, 
buy buy the medicine then for that elevated cost. Well, let's say let's say you buy these two pills for forty dollars, and you go however many weeks till you're you're ready to redo your prescription, and you don't have a migraine, you would have acted irrationally. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> well, you spent forty dollars and didn't have a migraine. Right. Well, I mean, it's you, you make a you make a forecast, like I said. You use the information that you have currently, and you use the information you have from experience, and you make a judgment call. And if it happened again, maybe the next time I would say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the risk and not and go ahead and not uh not buy the the pills. Then it was like after uh, it took a little bit of time before. Uh, graduating college before I found full-time work. And so back then, they didn't have, Obamacare didn't mandate that you're on your parents' plan until, what, 26 or 27? Yeah, 26, I think. So I was off my parents' health insurance, and so my, I remember my dad handed me the Co- uh, COBRA paperwork and said, you, you know, you really need, you need to get health insurance. I looked at the price, and it was like 700 bucks a month or something. And I said, Pfft. I'm 22 years old, pretty healthy. Uh, I'm going to take the risk. So, you know, that one worked out in my favor. I didn't get sick or anything or didn't have to use the doctors in the couple months that I didn't have health insurance, but... I did that as well. Yeah, I mean, you could... I know you were <coughs> making a joke when you said I wasn't being rational, but that was a risk right, no, well, and a yeah. forecast. And if I were wrong, I mean, if, if I got sick and I needed health insurance or something... Uh, during that time, that people would do it was irrational for you not to uh, buy the Cobra. But the reality of it is, is that I don't have a crystal ball. No one has perfect knowledge. You can't foresee the future. So you know, it, it's all about risk. You're all ma- always managing risk. Right. Yeah, I was joking when I said you're acting irrationally, but that is something people will argue with us over and say, no, that's an irrational thing. However, the other thing, you bought peace of mind. Yeah, that was the other point. Uh, by having those pills on you, you know if you have a migraine, you're going to be okay, and that that is valuable. Because mm-hmm. it is it is stressful when you run out of pills and before you can refill the prescription and be like, "What's going to happen if I get if you get slammed with one?" It's not fun, <laughs> right? So if you didn't use them, you have them for the next time you go through them, and you have two extra ones, great. And if you never use them, you still have the peace of mind that you have them in in case you do need them. Absolutely. So the other issue is, and I briefly mentioned this before I went back to the other idea, was that, you know, it, it, why 20 bucks per pill? It, it seems like a lot. There's plenty of over-the-counter medication that you can buy, you know, 80 or 100 pills for that same amount of money. So is... And I know we can't exactly answer this question because then, again, we don't have perfect knowledge. We don't know everything that's going on, but it seems like maybe that price is a little bit inflated because is, it, are all medications like that actually an insurable risk? We're so used to just paying having the uh, paying a copay for prescription drugs, but it doesn't really make sense to do that all the time. And maybe we don't have to talk about migraine medication specifically, but just uh, more generally speaking, so we can, you know, not have someone who has technical knowledge of producing sumatriptan and saying, well, actually, it's uh, this thing is what makes it really expensive. Yeah, I mean, that could be what the market price would be for that. I don't know. Um, what we do know is that there is not a free market in, in medication. Absolutely. Uh, you need permission to operate in that field. And so... You know, if someone can produce that pill cheaper, they're not necessarily able to get in that market. And I don't know the specifics of how you do that. But what happens in a free market is someone go forty dollars for a pill. I can make that thing for three dollars and sell it for six and make a pretty nice profit. I'm going to get in that market and do that. Um, But you're not able to, at least in the United States and probably in most countries. Right. I think India. Uh, dropped a lot of the regulations around uh, pharmaceutical productions and prices as expected. Are you familiar with the results? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I did work in pharmaceuticals for a little bit uh, in the uh, in a vaccine production um, 
Really? Uh, no, they they were getting well. They were gearing up for uh, production. Um, but they pr- uh, the company I worked at produced all sorts of of pharmaceuticals, and the red tape and everything else surrounding that is is really really unbelievable. It's um. Obviously, there's a lot of things you need to take care of and, and really be um, very particular about because it is medicine. You really want to make sure you're, you're not putting any, any bad things or uh, making mistakes it's with, with everything you're producing. Right. right. But on top of that, there's plenty of, of government regulations that just makes life so much more difficult. But just the idea of just looking at how the market works with it and that um, what happens when you don't see the actual cost of something and you're only paying just this little set fee all the time. Like I said, my, my copay for the prescriptions for filling a prescription is $10. And I'm pretty sure that's $10 regardless of what the prescription is. Right. So if your prescription costs a thousand dollars, you pay ten. If it costs twelve dollars, you pay ten. Right, and I have so I have no idea that when they told me that two pills cost just over forty dollars, it was the first time anyone has ever given me a price for something like that. So we really have we're, we're really making these decisions kind of blindly to the price. So it's not surprising that the cost goes up and a lot of medications out there. I mean, things go wrong with you, with your body and your health, obviously, but they're not exactly catastrophic events for the most part. So why would insurance be covering a, uh, something like pills like this that can be mass produced that, I mean, enough people, migraines are a normal common enough occurrence that, there are plenty of products out there for it. Um, it doesn't seem like this is something that the market would uh, produce as an outcome, that we would have a lot of these medications being uh, insurable, especially since a lot of medications end up going over the counter eventually. Mm-hmm. And it's just up to the person to decide whether or not they want to buy the product and how much they want. Um, I can make a joke about tractors now to fill the, uh, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have anything. Maybe don't something actually about, have them. no, maybe something okay. about fruitcake, but yeah, no, we'll leave that one out. Um, sorry, I didn't, I didn't pass that off well for you. Yeah, no, I didn't, I, I didn't really, um, know where you're going with it. But, um, other than that, by not. What I think you were saying, you got me my mind totally off by talking about tractors and fruitcakes. Um, but, but basically, you're saying when someone else is spending someone else's money, you don't know what the prices are and you don't care what the prices are. Right. It would be like if your car insurance, and this is the, the, the example that gets used all the time, if your car insurance covered oil changes. Yeah, right. So that, that would what we would say is not an insurable risk. You know you're going to have it. You're, you know that you're going to need an oil change. Therefore, there is no insurable risk. It's guaranteed it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can't pass that risk off onto someone else because everybody is getting the oil changes. There is no risk to pass on. It's not even a risk. It's a guarantee. Um, so, you know, with I'm in the life insurance business. So what people could say, yeah, but you're guaranteed to die. But nobody knows when. And that's where the insurable risk comes in, in that they'll look at the actuaries, look at these tables, and it'll tell you, a percentage of people at a uh, percentage of males at age, whatever are going to die this year. They know that they know the law of large numbers that a certain amount of people in a certain risk class are going to pass away this year. They don't know how they don't know why they just know it's going to happen. And then they can base their premiums on that. So yeah, someone could buy an insurance policy, um, be healthy, Runs marathons, great blood pressure, cholesterol, good health, good height, weight, everything's great. Gets preferred best risk, and he uh, signs his papers for the policy. Gets underwritten, accepts it, pays the premium, walks outside, gets hit by a bus, and dies. The insurance company um, doesn't. <laughs> I mean, they're very sad the guy passed away, but it doesn't. They don't mind paying that because that's factored into their actuarial tables. 
Um, and that's the beautiful thing about insurance and why we think it would work in a free market. Right. But there's, there's a risk that be with being sick though, right? So wouldn't that be? Well, yeah, there's a risk for sure. Right. So there's wouldn't a that, interest in being sick. Right. So wouldn't that be something that insurance would cover then the risk of you coming down with migraines or something, or that the risk of you getting a cold and need medicine for it? Potentially. Sure. Right. So, I th well, the point I'm trying to make here is that just because there, it's something is insurable doesn't mean it makes sense to insure it, or there's a risk that there's an insurable risk that doesn't make it sense to, uh, to insure it. If I can get porky pig out of my mouth and start talking my own. Well, that's uh, up to the consumer. Right. And as we see with other medications, like for, I just said with the cold, there's plenty of over the counter cold medications out there that are cheap enough to produce that it just doesn't make sense for insurance to, to necessarily cover it. Um, and if they did, it would probably just be at the point where you would pay the cost of the, uh, of the medication through the insurance. It, it, it's right. Potentially. It just, right. It would just be now. What it would probably do is say it did cover you had a maybe it was mandated because since it's not covered, generally, I mean, I don't think most insurance policies would cover cough medicine. Maybe they do. Maybe there is prescription strength. I don't know. Well, I was just talking about something that could be just in general. Yeah, I right. get I get what you're saying. But say it did. And uh, I mean, they would have to obviously limit how much you can get, in which case you're probably just paying for it, like you said. Right. Uh, because anyone can go buy cough drops or cough medicine. Um and if, if you were allowed to buy as much cough medicine as you want for $10 every time you go, and the what we find out the market price is $15, uh, that would not have good outcomes because people would buy more than they should. Right. Or the insurance companies would start to restrict how much you can how get. How much you can get. Which is what, <laughs> which is what I found out. It. Yeah, which, you know, and, and that would, you know, that causes shortages. Right. Or I could, you know... Maybe there are certain times of the year. I think I do kind of certain times of the year is the migraines uh, work differently uh, or I get them more often than not. But in the times where I have them less often, then I can kind of refill my prescription sooner than I need it and start hoarding the medication and saving it. But, you know, I don't know. That thought popped in my head, but um, to me, it's not even worth it. Try that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, what do you say? What do you say to people who would say, you know, kind of, kind of switching gears with saying on the topic, what would you say to people who say that health is different than other goods and services because it's your health, and sometimes you're really going to need something really bad, and the, you know, you call the ambulance and they take you to the closest hospital, and maybe this hospital for, um, you have to go in for surgery. And they charge a million dollars for the surgery. And you had no choice in that because you were passed out or you had a stroke or a heart attack or whatever the case is. And uh, the ambulance came and took you. And the ambulance ride cost $80,000. And the hospital charges a million dollars for the procedure they do. And they do that because there's no regulation that, al that allows them to do that. And you have no choice because you need it now. Right. Well... First of all, I would say that there really is not much, there's no economic difference with health as a market compared to any other. Uh, so but, you think that someone's health is the same as a banana or an apple at the supermarket? Yes. <laughs> economic, the, uh, the point of that is- Economically sure, yeah. Yeah, the economics behind it, it's the same thing. Um, but I would say that you would probably have agreements set in place- contract set in place with an insurer that if you had to call the equivalent of the free markets 911 to get an ambulance to you to get you to a hospital that those where the hospital is or, or how much it costs would already be worked out yeah and that's where insurance companies would be needed and and people would want that and it would probably be fairly inexpensive because how often do you have an emergency ride to the hospital maybe once in a lifetime right um you know and that was so that would be fairly inexpensive and the insurance companies who would be pulling all this money would be negotiating with the hospital and if a hospital did charge a ridiculous amount for someone who in the world would go to that hospital after that 
Well, you don't have a choice. You had a heart attack. Well, I'm saying that the people people looking at that afterwards, it hurts. The, it would hurt them. Uh, probably, it would, presumably, it would hurt them to say like, "Oh, these people charge." Oh, X, they would have X, so much y, Z. Okay, well, I'm going to make it so that you know, I, I talk to my ambulance company or the insurance and say, if I need medical attention, do not bring me to that hospital because they charge too much. Right, and that's clearly, uh, um, I, I think. People may have that concern. I don't know. I actually don't think they would have that concern because I don't believe it would actually happen. Right. Um, outside of outliers. But let, let's say that was a problem that, you know, government just went away and people were going crazy and charging things and there was lots of fraud and all, all the things that the state has said will happen start coming true and we just need to wait for the market to settle things down. Um, that would be a concern for a lot of people. And I think we would, like you said, have some kind of agreements up front that if this happens, you're going to charge X or, or whatever, whatever how, however they decide that because people don't want to be put into bankruptcy over something like that. Or right. Yeah. People lose all their money and everything they have. And uh, if it can be done cheaper or more inexpensive, it, it would, it would happen in a market. And we see that actually with, um, Cosmetic surgery. Mm -hmm. The well, price of cosmetic surgery, LASIK eye surgery back in the 90s was very expensive and very few people could get it. Now it's relatively inexpensive. There's been no insurance on it. The price in, in some procedures in nominal terms has decreased over the last 20 years. If you put in inflation, it's really decreased. Why is it that we see health insurance, health care, not health insurance, well, health insurance too, but health care continuing to rise? And I think that answer is obvious. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's like any other market that's not completely twisted up by the the government regulation. People are allowed to, you know, shop around and and get what's best for them. People aren't people aren't stupid. People have foresight and they can predict that this this event might happen to me, so I should have my affairs in order to deal with it, so that I'm not caught with my pants around my ankles. Not everyone does that, but a lot of people do. And there's businesses that are set up to help people make those decisions. And insurance is, is, is one of them. And just the whole, the whole market surrounding it. Um, In fact, yeah, I mean, if you really want to know the problem of insurance or with health care, health insurance, not insurance, but health insurance and the healthcare industry is next time you go to the doctor, ask how much something costs. Right. They don't know and they don't care and they presume you don't care because no, you're not paying for it and they're not charging it. It's all <laughs> agreed upon by people we don't know and who have no interest really in your prices. So if you start asking for prices and finding out, and then if you have money saved up, offer to pay in cash, see how much they'll knock off the price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it'd be pretty neat to see what happened if you shop around. Like if I, if I went to a pharmacy down, now I know it's not that simple. I can't walk into various pharmacies and, and ask them to buy prescription drugs. But, you know, taking that, out of it, um, just imagine what I could do if I could shop around. Well, even when like I have three young kids, and um, you know they go to the, they do their checkups every six months or whatever they're supposed to do, and I oh I like to do that. Ask the doctor how much whatever we're going to do costs, and they never have any. They never know. They say they'll have to look into it for me, hmm. but it's probably covered by your insurance. It, this will be covered by insurance. Right. I get, yeah. I guess he doesn't understand what what you're getting at. No, and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go off on a little monologue on why I'm doing it. I just find it interesting. Yeah, you should. I'm sure you'd make better friends with your doctor. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so I don't know. Do you have anything else to uh, to add? Um, no, I think we covered what we wanted to talk about. Um, was there something we talked about before the show? I don't know. Was there? No, I'm asking. Oh, uh, no, not that I remember. Do you have okay. a uh, Do you have a free market success story? No, I didn't think of one this week. I, I was kind of figuring that we could kind of tie this one. The whole uh, I was still able to buy medicine that I needed, so I think that's successful, even though it was expensive, maybe a little more expensive than it than it would have been in a free market. You were able to get it, but I still was able to get it. I made a decision to buy it, and I, and I was happy. I had that 
that opportunity. So now I don't know the rules or the laws, but if a doctor like, how does that work? Do you know? Because if they say you can have nine pills every month or whatever. Well, I don't know that it was the doctor that said that. It was – they were okay. saying at – or at least the pharmacist was saying that it was the insurance determined gotcha. that they would pay for a nine-day supply. So maybe the doctor says you're good to have 20 a month and the insurance company says we'll pay for nine. Right. And I think the, the – don't pharmacists – like that's why they're there to make sure that what the medicine Probably. they're giving, like you can – they understand medicine and stuff. Supposedly. Right. So I assume that they're like, all right, well, if he's taken this many in this period of time, we give him two pills for the next, you know, four or five days and he'll be okay. Um, I guess, I don't know. I guess the doctor determines that this is, this is a good medication and the pharmacist helps determine. Yeah. Dosage no, I mean, that makes sense to me, but I just kind of assume the state would be involved and say like, no, you're not allowed. Yeah. I have no idea. But apparently, whatever we did was... Well, it worked. Yeah, which is what I care about. Yeah. So, yeah, we can, we'll can we'll use that as a, a free market success story. Good. Um, it's nice when the uh, the episode, the entire episode is kind of a, a free market success story. But yeah, uh, and we could have more success if government got out of the way. Yeah. Which, just another side note, and I think we talked about this on a previous episode, and I know we've written about it, but... The whole thing with Obamacare, and that I guess is not as big a topic as it was four or five years ago, but uh, that's more government coming in to help solve, in air quotes, problems that the government created. And we can go all the way back to FDR to see that. And before FDR, almost everybody was covered for insurance, um, which they got voluntarily, and um, by him capping wages and giving incentives for employers to buy it, it just threw the whole market out of whack. And that's how we end up where we are today, and healthcare costs continue to rise. Doctors, I'll bet you doctors, if you looked at how much they make per hour per or per patient, they're doing well, but not as well as you think. Right. So uh, if you're interested in in hearing more about insurance, uh, I was on... Mance Raider's podcast, Free Man Beyond the Wall, yeah, uh, this weekend, where we, we talked about how insurance and free market regulation can solve a lot of the problems that the government currently claims is the only one capable of solving. So that's in the show notes page, that episode. It's his episode 72, I think. I think he's, I think he's only one episode behind us. So he see. saw us doing it and wanted to get involved? Yeah, that's like uh, how Bob Murphy recently in a an episode, I think of Contra Krugman, again, he mentioned tractors. He, he listens. I know. It's, the, it's only, the only it's, it's the, the only possible conclusion to draw from that. Yeah. But uh So thanks, Bob, for listening. Yeah, we appreciate it. And uh, you know, a little bit of credit for you know giving you ideas would be nice. But you know, Whatever. that's a free market, I guess, and we don't believe in IP, so it's all good. Look, we didn't pay for advertising on his show, so I guess that's why he won't do it. Yeah, that's fair. But uh, but 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 uh, Matt Raider, he's got a check him out on Twitter. He's always posting awesome stuff. He's a great libertarian. He just posted uh, wrote a book. I think we linked to it here before. Um, the meme. What, what's yeah. it called? The memes. Freedom through what, memedom. Freedom through memedom. Yeah, he's like got a meme. meme a day. Yeah, meme yeah, a day cool. for the month. For, for the month, uh, it's a great book to put on top of your toilet to, uh, you know, bathroom reading. And so when people come in and guess, they see it. Maybe you just open it up and, and kind of thumb through it and uh, get some liberty ideas. So Or give it to your friends. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Do you have anything else? No, I think that covers it. Yeah. We're, uh, okay. It's, it's always funny. I, I, I look at the clock. And it's like six or seven minutes in. I'm like, man, we've talked about everything we're going to talk about so far. And I look at it now, we're almost at 30 minutes. So Perfect. I, I think that's a good spot to wrap up. So again, the show notes page is mcflugel.com slash 73, where you'll find links to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, as well as subscribe to our email newsletter. And since I said it on Mance's podcast, I might as well say it on our podcast is that, uh, 
Slappy and I have a pro- one of the projects we keep saying that we're that are in the works um, that you never hear about it, but we have a website we're getting ready to launch soon called LibertyMugs.com, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be coffee mugs with a bunch of libertarian stuff on them, all sorts of different uh, uh, themes and topics. So uh, if you subscribe to our email list, we will be sending a, uh, a discount to those subscribed. So just a little more incentive if you haven't uh, decided to hop on yet. And yeah, uh, yeah make sure to follow us on uh, <laughs> Stitcher. Do that. But also on Twitter and Facebook and all the other uh, social media spots we've got linked on the show notes page. So we will catch you next week. Thanks for listening. Peace.